Hello my soccer universe. What a letdown. Let's get over with it. Um, I decided I'm still gonna wear Milan. I'm a Milan fan. Cannot wear Inter. And I think it's not quite clear who of the other two teams I should wear, but it would not feel genuine. A um, little bit of housekeeping before we talk about the games. Um, here's my all European semi-finals background. There will be a video on the choice of the shirts coming out tomorrow because I'll be traveling so I will not be able to cover uh, timely the Europa League and Europa Conference League semifinals. I might do it once I come back but it may be uh, Sunday or something like that. So just as a heads up. Champions League games. What? It was a weird set of games because I think what we thought could happen in one game happened in the other. And I'm talking about, there was kind of this fear that Manchester City are gonna just roll over Real Madrid and kill the tie rather early on, a little bit like they did with Bayern Munich, um, though it took them a while there. And then this happened in the Milan Derby, where after 11 minutes, it was the tie was more or less decided. I have, I don't see, Milan coming back in that one. Um, it was more or less exactly what I feared would happen. And in that video about the European background, you will see me talk about that in a way. It is exactly what I feared would happen uh, because I saw Inter in such great form and I saw Milan struggling. And then with the additional uh, bad news that Leao cannot play, you take the main attacking threat away from Milan. Um, and yes, the bench is not as steep and I've always maintained that while I think all healthy, the first team of Milan is better than Inter's. As soon as you have to rely on subs, Inter's bench is much deeper. I mean, you start Lautaro and Jaco, you can bring on a Lukaku, this is just on the offensive front. I Every substitution, I mean, even uh, taking on Mkhitaryan and bringing on Brozovic, uh, it just everything is better for Inter there. The bench is so deep. And yes, there might be the slight hope on the horizon that, you know, the financial situation for Inter is not that happy. And this is probably the last real great run for this side, a side that has been built more or less since 2018 when they had the first forays into the Champions League. Uh, winning the Italian title and now uh, after kind of a little uh, two seasons where honestly Inter probably threw away a title because if they would have had their S together I think Inter could have should have taken last year's title they threw that away uh, in Bologna also the way they lost the derby but in addition I think they um, if they had it all, to all together I think they could have challenged Napoli as well, though Napoli, as I said, was really outstanding and I don't want to take anything away from Napoli, but uh, when it comes mano a mano battle, Inter are the better team. And talk about the first game and we'll go then a little bit. I thought this was the weirdest game. I mean, it was definitely the more class game. You could see those are two excellent, excellent sides of what we are watching. We saw two brilliant goals where we can definitely discuss which one was the better goal. Um, I think from the whole build-up, I liked Vinicius is more. Also, the um, the way he struck it looked a little bit more, uh, you know, exciting. However, just the strike, the way that Kevin De Bruyne hit that ball, it's just such a beauty. Two brilliant goals uh, settle a tie that, uh, and both goals w went against the run of play, which is, uh, I've never seen anything, I, mean, I may have seen it, but uh, it was so weird on this high, high, high level. Well, um, while we edit, it, I would say, let's uh, just recap that Real Madrid, Manchester City tie a little bit. As, as I said, um, Manchester City came out really, really pressuring uh, Real Madrid into their own half. And Real Madrid were prepared for that. You, you could see, I actually really uh, was impressed how Alaba and especially Rüdiger took out the threat from Erling Haaland. I mean, he had two shots uh, or two chances, but nothing really where you say, oh, here goes Haaland and now he's going to score. Uh, 
And with all the pressure the city produced, the only thing they got together a few long range shots by uh, Rodri and Kevin De Bruyne and so on, which were more or less routine saves by Thibaut Courtois, uh, where I thought, yeah, this is kind of the Belgian duel between De Bruyne and Courtois, which I found interesting, not really re Vinicius Jr. against Ed Edison on the other side is a Brazilian duel. But I guess um, two Belgian players playing against each other sticks still out a little bit more because we have so many Brazilians uh, everywhere. Um, what I was also impressed is that despite this huge pressure, Real Madrid very often tried to pass themselves out of trouble. There were a few sequences where it was close to the corner flag where they started to pass out with triangles. And as great as Manchester City was, you could see that I think on an individual level, the Real Madrid players are just a tad better. As a team, Manchester City I think works much better. But the individual brilliance of some of those players uh, is just really, 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 really high. And that makes for such an intriguing tie. Um, the entire match, I mean, I thought really that it could happen that um, Manchester is going to eat Real Madrid alive, more, more or less. But then there was this one breakthrough where Vinny breaks through on the left side and wants to serve it up to Benzema with an open net where um, Diaz just... Uh, takes it off in front of me, which kind of was this point where suddenly Madrid realized, yeah, we can also get into this game. And while it was still possession to City, uh, at that point, then Real Madrid got more dangerous. And then uh, the goal happened in the 36th. It was brilliantly played. I mean, the one-two between Kamavinga and Modric, Kamavinga running down, getting into Vinicius, just taking a shot up in the corner. It was a beauty. It was an absolutely beautiful goal. And at that point, then I thought, oh, this is this is like a boxer getting a really big hit in after having played defense for most of the, of, of the time. And I think at that point, I didn't necessarily feel that Real Madrid uh, scoring another one, but it seemed like this um, a little bit, a, a total momentum shift up. And it came in the second half, especially in the first 50 minutes that Real Madrid did to Manchester City, what few teams have done this season, and what Manchester City did to them in the first, first half, they created chances and they had quite some big ones. There was one from Benzema in, 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 in there. There was, um, the, uh, maybe, 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 maybe the shot came a little, little bit, but you know, they created chances. Nothing where, again, no, nothing, uh, nothing with edge of the seat stuff. Uh, they were done also, and this is, I think, where, where they lost in the control. There were a few calls for handballs. None of which I was really saying, yeah, those dusts need to be a handball. Um, but, you know, maybe one could, could have looked at it and waved it off. Um, I think there was only one that I really thought was, uh, now has had, has had that, that was maybe a little bit more agree, egregious. The other ones were just like with stones having the hand on the, on the back and then touching the arm. That's definitely not a handball. Um, I also have to say in the first half, I thought that uh, Kavakal and Grilish got into each other and I thought this was a tactic by Real Madrid to kind of set off Grealish, uh, which he fortunately avoided, but it was close. It was close that he's gonna e e explode because they wanted to have that red card on Grealish because they knew that he, he, could, he could be gotten it for sure. And I think the shift from Kavakal would have deserved a, a yellow card as well. But uh, going going back to that, I think uh, in this emotion ahead of the um, of front these handballs and then an out ball not gi uh, given got Real Madrid too emotional, and that's exactly a moment where the city struck. Uh, yes, the ball was outside. However, Kamavinga gets the ball and loses the ball again. So it's new phases of play. The VAR is never going to look over that. And I understand that uh, it must be frustrating because this shows should never, not, not, never happen. But we, uh, the way then uh, Gundogan sees that the Bruyne is absolutely free and that's the one man you don't want to have a sh uh, take, take, take a shot, went into the net. Uh, as I said, in terms of strikes, this is just so beautiful and so satisfying to watch that strike. It is cleanly hit, absolutely amazing. Um, then 
I think Real Madrid was rattled by that, but they got a little bit back into the game. And I, I always had the feeling if one is going to score, it's more Real Madrid. Man, man Manchester City, uh, and uh, remarkably, uh, Guardiola didn't make a change. And I thought he just wanted to keep everything kind of together because everything was working well. Whereas um, Angelotti said, we better get the win here. Uh, you know, he brings on then Asensio and Chiumeni. Chiumeni had the good shot. Uh, there was also a CC situation where I think a cross free kick um, got to Benzema, but uh, was saved by I think Benzema. Will, 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 will also, but I thought there was just just an edge towards Real Madrid. But overall, I think it was a very fair result. Completely reflected what we saw on on the field. It's just that the sequence of of, of the goals did not reflect what we saw on the field. Um, but it was an excellent, excellent game, which we cannot say. No, nah, I don't want to say it. Uh, I think the Milan Derby was an entertaining game, but the energy was sucked out, out of it. And just the build-up come, 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 coming into it. You could see, I mean, uh, I watched, I watched watching TV, but, you know, follow a little bit also on social me media because, because I want to see the lineups and, and, and so on. And you see the videos of Milan fans gathering around the stadium. You could see the sense of anticipation, everything there. Uh, you see the TIFO. You could see the players coming out saying, wow, wow. This, this is you could really feel that the players are impressed. By the whole atmosphere, this was the game, and it is so great to see those two clubs, those uh, that are European uh, royalty. And Milan is still the only city where two clubs have won uh, won a Champions League and multiple ones. And then Manchester could potentially become the second city to do that. Uh, you know, it's the M clubs <laughs> that are usually successful in Europe uh, and I think sooner or later probably, probably London will get in there as well but uh, for now it is only Milan that has that distinction and those are two massive clubs where uh, they are even on titles Inter maybe edged on the head-to-head -head in the Derby Inter edged in terms of Coppa Italia's one because that's a competition that Milan never can can win Milan edged in terms of European Cups being won um, well on the other side Inter have won a treble in, in between so uh, this is really an eye-to-eye -eye level meeting and what I like about the Milan Derby is that while it is fierce in terms of rivalry but it's more about prestige than about beating each other up but the Derby is you usually fierce and, and I think of oh, I will always maintain there are fiercer derbies in the world but by pure level of play over the decades this is the best derby in the world and it has the proper stage so everything was set and the game started starts are nervy uh as i said uh, well rafael was missing salamakers yes he has the speed but he has not the skill uh although he tries here and there but inter's midfield just bossed it and you could see that early on the well milan had tried, you know they were always but they were always like a, a tad too late the weird, the weird thing was, uh, I think it was not even a minute played, and I thought, oh, on, there's only a minute played? I thought it's already five. It was for me, I wanted to get out of this game with a draw, kind of, uh, to keep it open. And then um, a little bit out, out of nowhere, a corner kick comes, Czernogl puts, puts it in, and then Jacko wrestles past uh, Calabria. I think if he would have had it, that it probably would have been a foul, but since he goes with the foot over Calabria, yeah, uh, it was a really clean strike. Uh, Calabria is not a tortoise guy, he could jump high, but the one thing uh, is Def, 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 that Inter have so many tall, tall guys and Milan don't. And then Milan ran around like chickens and it was epitomized three minutes later when uh, Mike Manio has four players to his left and, 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 and to right. He doesn't roll the ball out. He punts it forward because he sees Giroud. But Giroud is well covered and, you know, going on the backside, it's not really well. And then, uh, and this was an, uh, a scene that was an analyzed quite uh, nice nah, nah, in Austrian TV. So uh, he loses that header. The ball comes back and Tonali does not pick up Mkhitaryan as a runner, um, he, do, he realizes it's too late, he's only in, 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 in a jogging mode. The ball comes to Di Marco, who, play, who sees uh, um, Mkhitaryan. And then Lautaro Martinez is about to receive the ball, but has the presence of mind to let it go to Mkhitaryan, who then runs, slices through defense. 
ahead of Magic Mike, who was not Magic, and it's 2-0, and it could have been worth, worse. Jalanoglu hits the upright with a brilliant shot there. That would, would have been probably the best goal uh, of them all. Uh, this And Milan were hanging in the ropes. Absolutely. Um, I have to say, during the match, I was rather annoyed by the ref not giving certain fouls because it seemed every time that Milan are going forward, maybe they were, uh, they were surely lo lo looking for fouls, but I, I always felt there were some fouls not given. Or that, you know, uh, could you please make one mistake? And then he makes them the, the mistakes, gives a penalty to Inter. But fortunately, VAR works there and he realizes, yes, this was not a penalty. And I was relieved at that point, really relieved that this was not a penalty. And that was a big shot on the arm for Milan, who then finally got a little bit in the, in, in, in the game. But I have to give huge credit to Inzaghi. Who knows? Milan is most dangerous when a team is attacking and they can hit you on the counter, which they did against Napoli. Also against Na Napoli. Napoli dominated Milan. They could not score. Inzaghi made the right conclusions. No, we are not going to play our usual style. We are going to give the ball a little bit more to Milan. We will dominate the midfield. We will get the balls and we hit them. And we get to the lead early because Milan cannot break us down defensively. And the inter-defense is rather, rather solid. And that was then the last 60 minutes of the game. There were half chances here, here, here and there. There was one big one in the second half. Through Junior Messias, ah, and I forgot that in the 18th minute to add insult to injury, Ismail Benacer is, come, is, is, is come, who is pivotal in midfield for Milan. Tonali pick, uh, had to pick up the slack and then he put in a good shift, but he is still uh, is responsible for the sec of a second goal. Um, and Messias then coming on, so uh, Pioli making or already changes. But I felt, and I always call it, that first team for Milan, all super. But what comes off the bench, the, the players are usually blind or useless. And, you know, Messias, I love his story. He's it's a great story. However, the way, there's this one chance early in the second half where he gets ample space, he can run through on goal. He panics and he puts it wide. And there were a few more shots that, that, that were taken wide. Then he brings an Origi. I mean, Jaw is maybe the one player where I said he is not useless. That's maybe a good uh, re replacement. But um, Origi, another player that has been absolutely useless. But he did one goal thing. He had this run and then he serves, serves it to Tonali, who hits the uh, left post. And it seemed all the shots are going to the left of the goal and not onto the goal. Onana barely had to make any saves. There was absolutely nothing and Inter played it home and probably with a little bit of luck they could have made a third one and completely killed kill the tie. I think if there's one thing that Inter have to blame themselves is that they left Milan barely alive. Milan is badly beaten, bruised, everything. I personally do not see how this Inter team uh, can lose to Milan in the second leg. I know we know all about Pazza Inter. It's in the realm of possibilities. But the form that Inter are in, the depth of the squad that they have, how they dominated Milan's midfield, uh, who desperately needs an upgrade. Desperately needs an upgrade. You lost Cassie. You're losing, um, you're losing Ben Azair. You need to get someone in there to a little bit be able to add some physicality. Because this is what Inter have. They have the uh, guard, they have the physicality of their runners. This is what makes what uh, on the outsides. I think Milan is are looking good. It's the center of the park. I always have thought that there's, there's creativity missing. There needs to be a major upgrade done. And so, yeah, bravo Inter, bravo Simone Inzaghi. Uh, read the game correctly, knew what they had to do, pulled out the right players, uh, set, 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 set up perfectly, killed off the tie after 11 minutes. It could have been worse. Uh, it was an absolute no-show, and this chicken show that Milan put on in for the first third, third, third minutes pff, was rough to watch. It was really, really, really rough to watch, and I'm still uh, devastated, absolutely devastated. Um, again, they left the door open by that much. That's the only thing I'm hanging my head on. I don't. I actually think he should not rush Leo back. I think you have to forfeit this uh, tie honestly. 
and you should focus now on the league to get this top four spot. But in this form, you're not getting top four. That much I can tell you already. So yeah, those are my thoughts on what happened in the Champions League. Um, we have the upcoming games. I will watch it on Tuesday. Inter Milan, Manchester, Real Madrid, I think will be the much better one. Um, this is one that hangs in the balance, but I think it's tilting now towards Manchester City. That draw, uh, I think both in the end could live with it, but I think Manchester City a little bit more. If we look at the standings now, uh, because it was so decisive advantage for Inter, Inter 85% favorites to move on to the final, which makes them also favorites for now to win the Champions League overall, but it's only due to the numbers. Manchester City also two-third favorite over Real Madrid. Seems, seems, seems about right. My worst case scenario is very likely to happen, as I said in the unpacking video. And yeah, I begrudgingly, I will support Inter in that one. Because I want an Italian team to finally win again. And yes, if Inter wins it, uh, just adds to the glory of the city of Milan. Uh, the wrong side though. But hey, so, so be it. In any case, please let me know what you thought about the ties. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. I know I'm not cheery today. I will get cheery, cheery today when in the evening I'm out with my family watching a concert. That will get me in a better mood and, you know, we'll get back into the groove. Any case, I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so to get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.